Welcome to this video series on how to calculate the sample size. Before going to that, let us quickly understand why it is important to calculate sample size, why your ethical committees, institutional review boards, funding agencies and reviewer of your manuscript insist on a clear justification for sample size. Inadequate sample size can lead to a lot of errors in your research study and it affects the internal validity of your research findings. That is the primary reason. If you are taking more than the required sample size, you are unnecessarily increasing the complexity of the study without any gain. That is the second important aspect. Third dimension is the patient safety and the ethical dimension. For example, if you are doing a study with a very toxic drug, taking two less than required sample size will not give you valid results after putting the patients at risk of the adverse effect. Taking two higher a sample size than required is again putting more subjects at risk without much gain in terms of the scientific validity so which is not an ethical practice so considering these reasons sample size assumes a high importance in your research study now we need to understand what is required to calculate a sample size you may go to a statistician or you may consult a software or you may visit a website where sample size calculations are available but in all these situations you need to have certain essential elements in your hand to calculate the sample size. What are these essential elements? First essential element is you need to understand whether you have a single group in your study or you are having two groups or more than two groups in your study. Second important aspect is what is the outcome of interest in your research study? And third point is what are the expected values of these outcome variables? And if you are conducting a single group study, you need to specify confidence level and precision. And if you are undertaking a comparative study, you need to specify alpha error and beta error, which is usually specified as power of study. First important element is number of study groups, which is relatively straightforward. Either one group or it is a comparative study with two groups or more than two groups. Second important aspect is the type of outcome. The outcome of your study can be of three types. It can be either numeric, it can be a categorical or it can be a rate. A numeric variable is the variable where when you are asking the question in return you will get a number as an answer. For example, serum hemoglobin of a person which is usually answered as 9.8 gram per deciliter or 10.5 gram per deciliter which is a number. This is usually expressed as mean plus or minus standard deviation. Second type of outcome is a categorical outcome. Answer to this kind of question is in terms of the text. The person is anemic or not anemic. Usually this is expressed as a percentage. The rate is usually expressed with a time component. For example, after giving a treatment, I want to see the rate of increase in hemoglobin per month. So it is expressed as number per time period. For example, 1 gram per deciliter increase in hemoglobin per month. These are the three key types of outcome variables. You need to have an understanding what is your outcome and what type it is. Then next important issue is to get the expected values of these outcomes in your research project. You have not yet started your study but how do you get these expected values? These expected values can be obtained in multiple ways. The most common way is to get it from a published research article. Most of the times you need to find a study which is conducted in a population similar to your study population, maybe in the same state or in the same country, or if not available, you may take a study published from other nations also. If no such study is available, then you may get these expected values from the retrospective case records of your hospital. If for example, this intervention is not being done in your hospital in a routine, you want to start it fresh, then you may not have any retrospective data available. In that scenario, usually you will undertake a pilot project with a small number of subjects, maybe 5 in each group or 10 in each group. And based on that pilot data, you can get the expected values and sometimes if the drug is very new, very toxic, you don't know the efficacy and safety of the drug, you may not be able to conduct even a pilot study. In those scenarios, 
based on your clinical understanding of the disease you will define something called minimal clinically important difference and you will say in my study if i am getting this much difference between the study groups or this much value in a single group i consider that as a minimal clinically important difference based on that you can start your sample size calculation and the final and important aspects which are fixed in many of the research studies are in case of a single group it is 95% confidence level and the precision which is usually kept at 5% in case of a comparative study the alpha error which is usually kept at 5% or 0 0.05 and most of the times it is kept as a two-sided alpha error. That means you are saying that my result can go in either direction. You are keeping it open. If you are very sure that your result can go only in one direction, then you will usually specify it as a one-sided alpha error. The beta error is usually specified as one minus beta error, that is power of study in any sample size formula for calculation. So once you have a clear understanding of these elements and you have the expected values and the uh, proposed values of these parameters at your hand, then you are ready to execute the sample size calculation. You may go to a qualified statistician to get this job done or you may consult a, a web tool or a software to feed in these parameters and get the sample size output. So even though there are a lot of tools available in the market the co-guide application is very unique and versatile tool for sample size calculation for three reasons the primary reason is the way it gathers the input parameters is very user friendly there won't be any confusion and at every stage you will have educational videos and a very unique chart support available and the most important aspect is the kind of output you are going to get is very comprehensive provided by no other software in the world. The output will give you the study design, a very detailed write-up of sample size along with the formula and it also gives a brief note on statistical methods you are going to employ in your research proposal and it gives you references in Vancouver format all the citations which you have used in sample size calculation including there is a reference for the formula from which textbook or which article it has been taken they are provided in Vancouver format this particular output you can directly copy paste onto your research proposal and directly use it in your manuscript which makes your life very easy so things are very simple try to understand why it is important to calculate the sample size and get all these essential elements into your hand and then go and sit with the co-guide software. Within five minutes, you go out with a very clear and comprehensive output in your hand. You would have seen many software applications supporting research, but with co-guide, research is simple, fun and exciting without missing the scientific quality. And the most important thing is it can have a huge positive impact on your career and practice. So what are you waiting for? Please log into coguide.in today itself. Don't forget to invite your friends and colleagues to join us and keep updated with the latest developments regarding biomedical research by joining our social media platforms. Hope to catch up with you soon. Thank you very much.